presenting the power box call and here we have it I have actually been fortunate enough to be using this radio for nine months already despite the fact that it's only very recently come out to market I picked mine up in June 2018 and here we are March 2019 and it's just hit the shelves. So before we get looking into the actual software itself let's have a quick overview of the specs that this top-of-the-line Powerbox radio has to offer and what sets it apart from other radios in this price range and category. 26 programmable channels, extreme long range, 4 antenna sets, 2 standard, 2 patch, redundant radio system, redundant battery system, up to 800 telemetry values per second, open bus interface for servos and telemetry, aluminium stick units, hull sensors everywhere, a total of 20 transmitter controls and 2 optional stick switches. Diving into the software then, here are the first things that you're going to want to do with your radio. Number one, select and change model. So we enter into the menu and we can either go to the change model quick link or if we go into the main menu we have the same link here. So change model. Here we have a series of folders where we can separate models depending on which type they are so as they can be easy to find. We can select the model we want and load it. There we go, that confirms that we've loaded our model. Crack, yeah. Number two, create a new model. This includes setting functions from a blank canvas and setting the outputs as required. Go into the menu again. We can go into either the quick link or the main menu item, click to the same place. Click on the plus for a new model. Let's call it new. OK. It now gives us a blank canvas. It asks us what type of model it's going to be whether it's a glider, a jet, or an acrobatic plane, a prop plane. Let's do that one as it's what I'm most known for. It's not a delta and it's not a V-wing. So, you see it. We have wing, tail, gear, brake, puddle smoke, and gyro. So each one of these is empty, and if we want to use it, then we can program it here quickly. So if we're going to wing, we have aileron left and aileron right. Control and simply move the stick and it detects automatically which stick has been moved. As both ailerons will be controlled by the same stick it copies that input and then we create the output. So channel number one, server number one and here number two. Let's say this model doesn't have flaps so we can leave that empty. We go back, tail we can have elevator, again, move the stick, detects automatically, and the output number three. Let's say for this example that we only have one elevator servo, so we don't need to complete the elevator right because only the one is going to be used. For the rudder we do the same, move the left stick, in my case, to mode two, and we want that to output to channel number four. Again, if we had more than one servo we could have it added here. So servo number five can also be rudder. Go back and we do the same with each one of the other channels. Let's just go to throttle just to complete the basics. Move throttle and assign it to channel number six. Go back and let's say that's it. You would do this for all the channels and all the surfaces. All of the basic services that are already in here. Proceed and it now creates each one of those functions and each one of those servo outputs for those functions. Now 
here we can see which one of those functions has been created. So aileron, elevator, rudder and throttle. It applies to servos 1 and 2 for aileron, 3 for elevator, 4 and 5 for rudder and 6 for throttle. If you forget something or want to add to it later, you can still modify these by, you can hold them to delete. Let's ignore that. Or we can create a new one. Let's call this one flaps. And you would do the same. You would assign the control, the trim and the servo output. But we'll go into that a little bit later. Number three, setting up dual rates expo and adjusting subtrims and endpoints. Subtrim, endpoint, limit and reverse. We can see these either in servos, which as you can see shows us all of the channels with the subtrim, the endpoint and the absolute limit, maximum throw, as well as the direction, normal or reversed. We can also access these directly from the previous screen, which was inside functions, by selecting the servo option. So for the ailerons, select here, and it will show us only the two for the aileron. So it just keeps it a little bit more visual, rather than having all of them on the same screen. You can use either, the result's the same. So you simply change the subtrim, the endpoint and the limit as may be required and the servo reverse. Expo and dual rates. Get back into the menu, main menu, functions and next to each function we have one setup which is common for all of the ailerons. So even though we have two servos it's going to be just the one main setup for all of the ailerons. Here we have the usual screen which shows that it's currently linear. We can adjust the rate, so we have 80% and we can change the expo however we need. And if we want to have a dual rate, we have the control rate here which we go to, let's say we want this switch, again it automatically detects the switch. And as you can see now, only for the rate it changes from 1, 2 to 3. So we can have three different rates if we so want it. If you used a two position switch, it would be the same, but for just a two. So we have 70, 100, and 80 for this example. As you see, the expo hasn't changed. If you want different expos for different dual rates, we go in and it can do the same again. Select which switch we want for the expo which can be either the same switch or a completely different switch. Let's keep it on the same one for simplicity and you can see now that it goes from 1, 2 and 3 at the same time on both of those. So start with 10, go to 20, up to 30. There you go, there it changes however we desire. Number 4, setting a timer. Go back into the menu, select timer, create a new timer, we can create many if we want to, go into the setup, we can set how long we want it to be before it lets us know, let's create a really short one, so 5 seconds, we can have seconds, minutes and hours, and start, let's say we want to control it from the throttle channel, so again we move throttle stick, it detects it automatically, have a nice diagram, and we can see that moving with the stick. So if we just bring these down a little bit, so we want it to start nice and early. You can see that going green or red, depending on the position. You can actually see the current value here, changing. There we go. You can also set a reset button if we wanted to. So go to input, let's say this one. And each time we hit that, it's going to reset the timer. Number five, home screen. Timer, widgets, 
telemetry sensors. Home widgets. We can use this little button here as a shortcut. Here we can have all our favourites. If you want to delete one from here, you simply hold it and it gets deleted. Or to bring one back onto there, simply go into the menu, hold it down, and as you can see, it gets added back in again. The rest of the home screen at first glance seems quite simple. It has all of the trims, model name, and the flight mode. But we can add all kinds of widgets to it. So if we wanted to put in there, say, the timer that we just created, it gives us the option of all the timers that we have. We want an alarm, yes. So let's say we don't want a pre-alarm, which you can set for 30 seconds or a minute or whenever you want prior to that. So that could be your get ready to land warning and the land or you should land and the time that you should never pass. So alarm, let's say we want sound and vibration. Go back, make sure that it's in blue as the blue one is the one that is selected. We only have one currently, but if you have multiple ones, it would be the blue ones that would be then showing on the widget. And let's say we want a large widget, as is the time and it's quite important. There we go. And if we start the timer with the stick. There we go. We have a nice red warning saying that we've gone past the timer, beeping and vibrating. Let's say we wanted to add something else. So we can add one there. We can have a quick link to anywhere in the menu. Let's see if it's a small widget. And let's say we want one that takes us to the servo monitor, which, okay, we can use that button there, but if we can have a widget, why not? So that will take us directly into the servo monitor. And the same would happen with the telemetry or the servo, which shows you the position of a servo. Telemetry, as soon as you have a receiver plugged in, it will give you all of the different telemetry options that can be shown. As I don't have a receiver plugged in at the moment, unfortunately I can't show you that. But it does it automatically. There's no need to plug it into the transmitter or do anything special. As soon as it's turned on, it's sending telemetry back and the radio is capable to pick it up and detect what kind of telemetry that actually is. You can also move these about just as you would on a phone, anywhere that you want. You can also change the size after they've been created, back to medium. And again, move that about however you want. And number six, a new way of thinking about mixes. Mixes. Well, we can see mixes in two different ways. We can either create a new mix in the same way that we always have done with previous radios, with a from and a to, along with all the percentages and when it should be on. Or this radio gives you an option to do it in a slightly different way. As what we've created are functions, as opposed to simply channels, what you can actually do is you can select that the flap actuates on the same servos that another function is normally controlling. So for this example, let's say that our plane doesn't have flaps because it's an acrobatic model, it's an extra. But we want the ailerons to act as if they were flaps, so as flapperons. So what we're going to do is we're going to have the aileron servos go up or down when we activate the flap. So let's assign the flap a switch. So let's say this one. We don't need a trim. And at the moment, because the switch is a three position one, the center position is in the middle of the three positions, which is no good because we would have flap up one way and flap down the other. What we normally want is flaps off and then a little bit of flap and then more flap. So in the setup for the flap, we need to modify the curve. So if we go into curve editor, 
we want to move those points. So the first point where it's where the blue line is now, so we get a little green dot, move it over to the first position, and simply change that value up to zero, so center. Going to move the other one, it's about a quarter of the way, so we're going to go to 25%. Next one up to 50 for nice round numbers, but you can move these to anywhere that you may need. And there we go. So now we have the top is now what, what was before the center. So flap off, half flap, and full flap. So we can go back. That's been copied there, so that's great. And now we want to assign flaps to the same output as the aileron. So aileron is currently servos one and two. So let's assign it to servos one and two. And as we can see, when the flap is off, it's using all of the same functions as before. So center, subtrim, and endpoint. It's not been modified, but when we apply the first point of flaps, it's moving it halfway and the other way it moves all the way. And we can do even more than that. Let's say that we want or we need some up elevator whenever we use flaps. So we would add the elevator servo in here as well with that same function for flaps. So elevator is servo number three. So let's add another one here. Servo three, okay. And let's say that we just need to move a little bit of that. So we move that. We have a little bit there. But the elevator itself, as you can see, is still working with the full travel. This is only affecting the travel assigned by the flap. We can see that again in the server monitor where when everything is off we have aileron, aileron and elevator. Ailerons are working as ailerons. Elevator is working as elevator. Flap. We have 50% flap 50% flap as well, because that started at minus 20. And the 5% up elevator, all of those are still working as ailerons. And the elevator is still working as elevator. And with full flap, we've got 100, 100, because again, we started at minus 20. And the 10 of elevator, which still works as elevator. So no need for a mix. You can actually do it just from functions. Easy. This is only scratching the surface with what this radio can do. So let me know in the comments below what features you actually want to see if they can be done in the radio, what you hope or want to be implemented, or what it is that you want me to show you in the next video of how to program your Powerbox core. Oh yeah, and don't forget to check out my new web shop, pickeringrc.com, where you'll find the products that I use in my own models, including all of the Powerbox products that I've shown and reviewed in my many videos here on YouTube. Thanks for watching, subscribe, like, leave a comment below, and I'll see you next time.